Hey guys, it's Jacob Myers from the 2020 ATA show. Uh, we're actually right now in the tethered booth uh, with Greg Godfrey. Uh, talk about a new product for this year, which is really exciting, and we've been testing it out for a little bit just at the booth and been very impressed. So, Greg, what do we have here? So this is the new for 2020, the tethered Phantom. This is the uh, uh, the new saddle we've been working on for dang near two years, two full hunting seasons. We've been testing it, and there's a lot of differences in this thing. At, at first glance, if you see it you might not be able to, well, you wouldn't be able to pick up on all the, the intricacies in the design that are, they're not just evolutionary, it's not just a small change, it's actually a big change. It's a revolutionary change in the way that we design this app. So there's virtually no flat lines in the Phantom. Mm -hmm. uh, basically every single panel saddle system in history, to include the Manus really, has had a straight line uh, for your waist belt line of the saddle chassis construction, the main body of the saddle has had that straight line. And that could cause a couple of problems. It could cause some hip pinch. It could cause the saddle to want to ride up. Uh, a few things that a lot of users experienced over the years, and the way we eliminated that was we eliminated that straight line. There's no straight line in the Phantom. So it's a complete redesign. It's not just a, a little change. The, the Phantom is more football shaped and that really helps the saddle stay locked in wherever you want it so you can really find all day comfort with it. It's a big deal. And there are other things too like the comfort channels here that we can talk about. Yeah. The adjustable bridge, the re-engineered lineman loops. We changed the location of the leg strap. We basically took the saddle from ground up, took all the customer feedback that we've been hearing for the last 18 months, that, you know, the hundreds and hundreds of, of saddle hunters that have said, hey, we love this, we don't like this, hey, we wish this functioned differently. And we basically morphed all that into one product. And we think we kind of hit a home run. We have demoed it for like 20,000 people, it feels like, here at ATA. And have some hardcore saddle hunters over the past two seasons testing it. And the feedback is pretty much unanimous that we solved like all the problems that people had with the, the, with the Manus and then some of the other options that are out there. So. We think we've uh, we've got a winner here. Yeah, and I'll say, um, if anyone's been following along with us, I've been testing out four different saddles this year from different uh, manufacturers. Uh, and I'll say this one definitely stands out. Uh, I had actually hunted, actually I got into saddle hunting because of you, Greg, uh, about a year ago, I actually got my first Manus and used it for the whole year. And I was one of those guys, no matter how I positioned it, I always, leaning was fine when I sat down, I would just get a little bit of hip motion. It was just my personal thing on uh, how it worked. The first thing I noticed in this, is when I'm sitting in it, there's absolutely no hip pinch, there's no pressure points that I'm seeing at all. But when I actually sit down and kneel down, I don't feel the pressure or anything like I would previously right on the hip, which is crazy because I'm actually a little bit heavier than I was last year. And then also just the the, the thought of coming into this, I didn't think it was gonna be as different as it really is, as the Phantom is, uh, which is really exciting. And there's a bunch of different things we're gonna go over uh, with this system and maybe why it might be a good option for somebody, especially coming from like my background or Andrew's background this last year, using a bunch of different saddles and kind of seeing what works for some and what, what doesn't work for others. And to be honest, the one thing I noticed about this saddle is how much more narrow in the back it is yeah. compared to like the Manus. And that was the first thing I noticed. I was kind of worried about that, being a bigger guy. Also, I'm a 43 inch waist for everybody out there. So a bigger dude, if you're 43, but 44, I still have slack right here. Yeah, you got plenty of room so in there. I so I probably could wear my bibs under this and not have any issues, which is really nice, because I know some of the bigger guys on the Running Gun White Tail Hunters page and the group were kind of worried about that. They wanted to get the new saddle, but they were kind of worried like, man, you know, I, it's not gonna fit me. I'm a 42, I'm a 43, I'm a 44. You shouldn't have to worry about that unless you're maybe wearing it up north and you're wearing a ton of layers but let's you know test it out um the first thing i'd like for us to kind of hit on what's why i'm sitting here is the bridge because y'all did something kind of new with the bridge that you're actually it's, it's patent pending is that right yep which is really sweet so let's kind of go over that first yeah, so it was a happy accident actually we we were running with like five different versions of an adjustable bridge we knew we wanted an adjustable bridge mm -hmm. that was a lot of a lot of hunters wanted that and i wanted that yeah. we didn't know the best way to do it and we wanted it to be stupid simple and then continue with our ethos of ultralight, yep. strong, without sacrificing complexity. We didn't want anything crazy. So mm -hmm. this is what we came up with. Uh, we call it, we're calling it the Utila Bridge. You've got, you can go from basically no bridge, four inches basically, all the way out to a little over 30 inches. Mm -hmm. And it's really, really simple. It works with a continuous loop pressing design. But the patent pending process was, a, like I said, a happy accident. Mm -hmm. We were playing with a bunch of different things and 
we ended up running the berry of the Amsteel instead of the manufacturer's recommended uh, 13 and a half inch berry, which is required to maintain strength. We, we ran it all the way through. So now it's basically doubled up and that's what allows this Prusik knot to actually bite. Now, when we went and we did our testing, we did what we call bubba testing, right? In the backyard where you just drop, drop heavy crap and yep. see if it works and go hook it up to a car and like yank on it and see if you can break it. And we're like, okay, it actually worked, cool. Now let's go do like real testing. So we went to a certified third party independent testing lab yep. and we did all of the ASTM spec standard drops. And we dropped a 300 pound <laughs> dummy six feet and this Prusik knot, uh, ju uh, it, it moved about a half an inch. Mm -hmm. That was it. And then it, it completely locked down. Yeah. So, uh, and then all we had to do was break the Prusik knot, yep. slide it up, and it was perfectly usable. Again. Show that. So, so you go here, and as you said, you break it. Yeah, that's so you, that's how you do it. You just break it like that, and now no matter how much weight on, you put on it, you just you do that little process. Carl actually taught me that term. Carl said you just break it do it just like that and that loosens it up just enough to where you can now slide it again so it's a it's a stupid simple and then click clip off of there i want to show you something else so yeah. this is what i like to call uh i like to call it transport mode so you yes. got this floppy bridge you got the saddle this is kind of floppy so i like to go in transport mode here you do it yep. I, you just pull it pull it tight now you you suck everything up yeah. And then I run the tail around and drop it in a sis hollow. Okay. So now you've got everything tight to your, your waist. That's awesome. Nothing is getting in the brush. It's it's a slick system. Even better, I'm thinking, is when you're climbing up and down a tree, especially like using the silent approach steps, I normally try to tuck it under my belt or something. Yeah. Because I always use a fixed bridge. Um, and going up and down the tree, sometimes it can hang. Where this, I can keep it nice and tight. And then when I'm, you know, got my linesman belt around, about to step into the platform, I get my tether out, run around the tree, loosen up my bridge, and then clip in. Yes. So I'm always connected while I'm stepping up into the platform. That's exactly and right. And you're not, you're not worrying about your linesman belt going up and around uh, the platform when you're standing into it. It's, it's super simple, and I like that idea. Yeah. So, Just and it's a quick adjustment. Lock that thing down in transport mode, yeah. and then do something with the tail. There's a thousand ways you could get rid of that tail. Yeah. You know? well, I mean, just, even tucking in just right behind, behind you yeah. is fine, as long as you're not going through briars. Yeah. That might, that might have a little tail. But yeah, putting your sis hauler pouch, you're fine. Yep. Um, now, another thing, just while I have it on, let's talk about the leg strap. Yeah. So I actually got my phone in here, just below that leg strap. Uh, you adjusted where you've actually had them attached now. Yep. So they used to be attached up on the manis, up on the actual waist yep. belt. There was two options with the manis. True. So you had the waist belt attachment, and then you also had like a lower kind of back here yeah. attachment. So the feedback was some guys, uh, they lost, you, lo you lost quite a bit of adjustability with that waist belt because the, the leg loop straps came out about four inches. So you're losing that that adjustability mm -hmm. and then some guys felt like they liked the lower strap but coming across and you know twisting and trying to find it maybe in the dark or with big clothes on yeah. it was kind of hard so what we did is we designed we redesigned that whole system and now it's you got a little tab drop it right in the tab and it's easy to easy to work with and we made it safety orange so you could find it in the dark and you know orange to orange and you're safe yeah another thing i like about it so on the manis uh, Andrew, for a while, he actually would run his through, or, you know, across the thigh to the back part. Yep. For me, being a bigger guy here, again, kind of answering some of these questions for the bigger guys, I didn't like doing that, especially walking in, because it felt like it was binding my leg, okay. picking up on it. And so I'd always keep it up top. But again, like you said, you know, lose a little bit of adjustability in the uh, the waist belt. But I really like how you got them a little bit higher up yep. on the saddle. And again, you got them color coded, so it's super easy to look super down and see orange, orange. And you've orange. got still plenty of tail here, so even oh, yeah. if you had on bibs, you could you'd be fine. Yeah, yeah. Again, that's not even a worry about it. Um, so that's really slick. Now, again, while I have it on, let's talk a little bit about. And actually, I probably need to get back up here. The what do we call these? The channel adjustment? Yeah, that's, those are called the comfort channels, and they're okay. they're super cool. So before you weight it. This is awesome. The, one of the things that we really wanted to do is, is figure out a way to put more pre more pressure or support underneath, mm -hmm. you know, on, on your butt more. Mm -hmm. Or if if a tree is maybe weird or if you wanted more support in your back, we wanted a way to do that really easily. And that's the system that we came up with after a whole bunch of trial and error. And yeah. we're, we're calling them comfort channels. So if you want more support up in your back, drop it in the high channel. If you want more support lower down, you drop it in the low channel. Yep. Now, I think most guys are probably going to run it in this me medium channel probably 90% of the time. And then on a, a wonky tree that's leaning or something mm -hmm. weird, you're probably going to maybe have to go up or down or something like that. But 
that, and, that's how it's going to work. And I personally have experienced that just with some of my other styles, just trying to mess around with them, especially in trees when you have to do a super low tether because yeah. there's a lot of branches. A lot of times having that a little bit higher up yep. is going to help a ton because you're going to be more in a standing position anyways. You can't lean back super far on those trees. So that's going to be really beneficial. Another thing I noticed while up here, when you adjust them, you can feel that pressure change, whether it's kind of continuous in that middle channel through both the bottom and the top uh, straps and throughout the whole backside. If you go down, there's more pressure on the lower part of your legs. So some guys might like that if they're standing up, if they just want to change positions on a long hunt. And then when you go higher up, it's more pressure in the back part, uh, higher up on the saddle. For again, if you're in a situation with a low tether and you have to stand more straight up, that might be a little more beneficial for you, especially if you can't lean back out because it's a super nasty tree. Especially like you're in a short pine tree or like in a, a cedar or something like that. Um, so that's really slick. Now, I think one thing uh, we ought to kind of talk about a little bit more so is the different design. You know, this is more cupped. It's a smaller yeah. saddle from the bottom to the top than like the man is. Yep. So again, yeah. kind of go back over the benefit of doing that. You know, yeah. how does that really help somebody when it comes to that, the comfort level and also the adjustment from, you know, a lot of different sizes to be able to get into the saddle. The term that we kind of use, you you hit it, is, is cup. Mm -hmm. It's the ability, you know, it's a, a concave, a concave, surface versus a totally flat surface. Now, with the Phantom, or let's start with the Mantis. If you lay the Mantis flat out on a table, you will see that it lays completely flat. If you lay a Phantom out on a table, you're gonna see that it has a built-in cup or it's concave. Mm -hmm. And that's not on accident. It, it didn't just magically happen. We built it that way, and it's actually a patent-pending build process okay. because it matters a lot. And the way the way it works is it just it just hugs your butt. I mean, it just cups your butt just like it's supposed to, and that solves that the the the, the want for that saddle to kind of ride up in some situations. And we were talking earlier off camera, and you know we listen. The Phantom is the direct result of customer feedback, mm -hmm. period. And you know if we sold a hundred saddles, eighty guys loved it, like fantastic. Twenty guys had issues. And of those, uh, that 20%, probably the majority, the majority of the, of the feedback we got was it wanted to ride up. And so that's how we solved it, is we completely redesigned the shape and we built in that cup. Yeah. And that's pretty much solved it. Yeah, and I say from a bigger guy, I've heard it from both standpoints, from like real small skinny guys uh, without, I say, much, um, uh, you know, size in their legs and their torso. You know, having issues riding up, but also bigger girls like myself had issues with that, just with the manus a little bit. And I'll say, being here and trying it out, a little bit different tether heights and different uh, bridge lengths and everything, I haven't had that issue at all. I definitely feel like you get that cupping uh, design really does help with that. You can really feel that. Uh, whereas you're not sitting on a flat plane that you're trying to bring around a you know not flat surface, right. uh, which is which is key, uh, especially for comfort. And again, when you look at it, it is smaller than the Mantis. It's a lot smaller. It's a lot narrower top to bottom. Exactly, and that's what I'm talking about from from the bottom part to the top part where your sis hauler attached to. And it's kind of counterintuitive. Yes. It's like comfort. You think you want bigger. bigger. You don't. Not yeah. not if it's designed properly. Mm -hmm. If it's designed properly by people that know what they're doing, then you can engineer. Uh, a smaller seat yep. and still be ultra light, ultra portable, efficient. You don't have to make it complex. You can still keep that simplicity that we love so much. Exactly. And again, this is all based around everything that y'all do, which is you know simplistic, but as lightweight, compact as yes. you can get. Don't have any extra bulk that really isn't needed. And that's exactly what this is. I feel very streamlined wearing. You should. And again, I've used a bunch of different options and. The streamlinedness of these saddles is definitely something that stands out among everything else I've used. And that's what I really like about it. When you're walking in, there's nothing flopping on you. And to be able to tighten this down, yeah. the bridge is just, I mean, killer, 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 killer. So I really enjoy it. Um, is there anything else we need to go over when Man, it comes I, to the saddle? I think we really hit the highlights. The, the, the most important thing is just try to find a place to, to try it. If, yeah. you, if you have a buddy, if you have a friend, mm -hmm. uh, you can't really get it in stores. And that's one of the biggest cons for saddle hunting in general is it anybody in America can go into Walmart, they can go into Cabela's, they can go into Bass Pro, yep. and they can see a tree stand, and they can talk to a sales associate that kind of could understand it. They could go to an uncle that hunts, a friend that hunts, and they can explain how uh, how a tree stand works. Well, we don't really have that in the saddle hunting community. Yeah. And, you know, the, the best way to, to do it is hopefully you know somebody that can help you try it, and we're trying to help solve that too. So try it out is, is what I would say. Is if, you, if you're skeptical of a saddle 
sell hunting system, and I don't even care if you try, you know, the stuff that I sell. Just go somewhere and try it, because I know you'll be a more efficient hunter um, if you, if you, you know, try it out and learn the system. That, that brings up one more question I want to ask is I know y'all doing a bunch of educational kind of like workshops throughout this coming year at different yeah. parts of the country. Do you have anything set in stone right now, part of the country, that we are going to have these events? Yeah, so so that was our biggest issue. It's like, man, we, we love this. We, yeah. we want to tell everybody about it, but how do we do it? So we came up with an idea. We call it the Teach and Train Tour. Okay. And in, in 2020, we're doing 20, a 20-city 20 tour. Awesome. That's kind of funny. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. yeah, but we're going to... Pretty much every major city, there's a map uh, on our website where you can go and find the closest one to you. Awesome. And it's what's really cool is we recruited hosts in each city, so okay. it's not like not like I'm going to every city and like you know, hey, do this. These are people that just love to saddle hunt and they want to help other people. They want to teach their buddies about it, teach their family about it. Yeah. So that's what we're doing. We we'll just be at a at like maybe like a city park or a piece of public land or mm -hmm. somebody's house that has maybe some land in the back, and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna eat food, and we're gonna try everything out, and have people that have been saddle hunting forever to teach you how to do it. Awesome! Yes, yeah, so that's a really cool educational workshop you yep. can attend. So that's worth looking up on the website. Uh, and the website is yeah, tetherednation.com or okay. like social medias, Instagram, YouTube, or, uh, or uh, Facebook. It's all there. You can awesome. find it there. Awesome. Well, Greg, we appreciate it, man. I yeah, think you knocked this out of the park. So thank you. Awesome. Thanks,